Let's make a line. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen with Hooked for Hope. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we're going to make a llama. There's actually a couple different deviations that you can make with your llama that I can't wait to share with you. One trick in particular that will help a few of you out, which I'm really excited to share. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified whenever I post a brand new video. I make so many different crochet videos covering a wide range of different types of projects that you are not going to want to miss out on. The pattern that we're going to be using to create this particular llama was created by the Friendly Red Fox. I'm going to include the link to the pattern right here on the bottom of the screen if you'd like to pause the video print that out and just follow along with me. I'm also going to include a link to this pattern in the note section below so you can just click on the link, print it out, and be ready to go. Special thank you to the Friendly Red Fox. I found this pattern on Pinterest and I am so excited to share it with you. Okay, so when I said deviations, you're gonna notice right off the bat that the pattern you just printed off will create a white colored llama or a cream colored llama. The color that we're gonna be making this llama in is pink. <laughs> We're making a pink llama. So right off the bat, we are changing the color of the llama, which is super cool because you do not have to stick with a particular color. You can choose whatever color you want pertaining to somebody's favorite color if you really want to personalize something. Okay. Second deviation that you're going to notice right off the bat is the pattern is going to be using Bernat Pipsqueak yarn, which is a highly textured yarn. The follower that asked me to make this particular llama asked if I could switch that up and not do a textured yarn, but do a paint box non-textured yarn in the color bubblegum pink. Some people just struggle with textured yarn and that's absolutely okay. You do not have to use a textured yarn, but the Bernat Pipsqueak yarn is a size five bulky yarn. The paint box yarn is a size three lightweight yarn. So the llama that we're gonna make with the size three yarn will end up being a lot smaller than the llama that will come out with the size five bulky pipsqueak yarn. Does that make sense? If you do want to increase the size of your llama, check out this video right here that I made. It's called how to make a ball, but I don't just talk about how to make a ball in that video. I talk about how to morph that ball, how to make that ball bigger, smaller, stretch a cylinder out longer or shorter. And this absolutely pertains to this llama, especially the body. The body part is a cylinder. So if you want to increase the size, I show you how to do that. If you want to make the body longer, I show you how to do that. All the pieces of the llama pertain to this actual video if you wanted to make this llama bigger or if you want to make it smaller. Make sense? Awesome. Okay, so if you do make a llama with the non-textured yarn and it kind of bums you out because when you think of a llama, you think of their fur, you think of them being fuzzy, I have a trick for you. So I turned a non-textured yarn llama into a fuzzy llama all by using a wired cat dog brush that's not used brand new and all you do with your llama when you finish it or before the pieces are actually sewn together you choose when in the process you want to do this you take the wired brush and you just brush the llama and eventually this yarn turns into this and then you got your fuzzy llama cool trick right takes a little bit of time you want to be soft, but I'll go over that a little bit more at the very end of the video if it's a choice that you want to go into. Great! So now that we've gone over some of the deviations, let's go straight into what materials you're going to need to make this llama. The materials that we're going to use to make our pink llama, if you are following the pattern exactly, uh, it calls for a Bernat Pipsqueak yarn in the color white. It wants two of these, two skeins of these to make your llama. We are not using this particular yarn. We're using the paint box yarn. It was a special request from the follower. The paint box yarn is a size three weighted yarn. I only needed one skein of this. It is color bubblegum. All right, you'll, you will want a size four non-textured yarn in the color ivory or off-white. And this will be used to make the feet, the face, and the ears. Uh, I used Karen Simply Soft in the color Off-White, but you do not need to focus on that brand. Just focus on the fact that it's a size 4, non-textured yarn in the color Ivory or Off-White. Okay. You will also need a yarn that is black and not textured. We're going to use this to sew on the eyes and create the nose and the mouth. Okay. You'll need two buttons for the eyes. 
you can choose your buttons, whatever button do you think will look cutest on your llama. I'm not going to pigeonhole you into having to use a specific button. Just use whatever you have in your craft room or whatever button you think looks best on your llama. Uh, you will need a yarn needle or tapestry needle to sew your pieces together, a crochet hook size F, 5, or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. What is awesome is I used this crochet hook for the size three weighted yarn, but it also calls for this crochet hook with the pip squeak yarn. So you use this same crochet hook on both, you know, on all the yarn, okay? To make all of your pieces. A pair of scissors. Optional is the wire brush if you want to turn your non-textured yarn into a textured fuzzy yarn after you've made the pieces. And you will need polyfill or some kind of stuffed animal stuffing to give your llama shape to give it form. All right, that's all the pieces that you'll need. Let's go ahead and dive into how to make your llama. In this pattern, we start with the head. The head is worked in rounds, so you can either begin with a magic ring or you can begin with the chain two method. I am fond of the chain two method, but if you really like the magic ring, then go for it, absolutely. Okay, so I use my row marker tail to help me indicate when I have ended a round. If you'd like, you can use your row markers. I'm going to put my slip knot with a bit of a tail to start with. Okay, make your magic ring, or I'm going to start with the chain two. One, two. For round one, it says put six single crochet inside your magic ring, or put six single crochet in the very first chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. So this pattern is worked in continuous rounds. We will not slip stitch and chain one. So you can put your row marker in this very last single crochet there if you're using row markers. I'm using a row marker tail, so I'm going to yarn over my tail and pull it through that last loop just to indicate that's where I finished row or round one. Okay, for round two, it wants us to put an increased single crochet in each stitch all the way around. All that means is put two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. We will end round two with 12 single crochets. So diving right into that first stitch, I'm going to put two single crochets in that same stitch. One, two, three, four, eleven, twelve. Great. Okay, move your row marker to this last stitch right here or add an additional row marker if you want to do it that way or I'm gonna yarn over my row marker tail and pull it through that last loop to show that that was the last stitch of my row two, or round two. Okay, so we're in round three. In round three, we're going to put one single crochet in the first stitch and increase single crochet in the second stitch and then repeat. One single crochet, increase single crochet. All that means is one single crochet and then two single crochets go in the same spot then one, then two, then one, then two. You'll repeat this pattern all the way around round three. You will end round three with 18 single crochets. So going straight into that first stitch, one single crochet, two single crochets, one, two. Okay, last stitch of round three. Going to yarn over my row marker tail and pull that through my loop. This is the same exact stitch where you would add your row marker. Okay, so for round four and round five, it says just a single crochet, one single crochet in each stitch around. So you will end round four and you will end round five with 18 single crochets in that round. So Going straight into that first stitch, we're going to single crochet. Okay, we just finished row round five. Move your row marker. I'm going to move my row marker tail. Okay, round six, 
It wants us to single crochet in the first two stitches, so one, one, and then it wants us to increase single crochet. So put two stitches in the next. So one single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet, and then repeat. One, one, two, one, one, two. You're going to repeat this pattern all the way around for round six. You're going to end round six with 24 single crochets. One, one, two, one, one, two, twenty three, and twenty four. Great. Okay, move your row marker. For round seven and round eight, you're just putting one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So for round seven and for round eight, you're going to have a total of 24 single crochets. For round nine, it wants us to single crochet in the first three stitches, one, two, three, and then increase single crochet. So this is the new repeating pattern for round nine. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, two single crochet, one, 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 two. So let's go ahead and repeat that process all the way around. You're going to end round nine with 30 single crochets. One, two, three, and then one, two. One, two, three, one, two, twenty nine, thirty. Okay, move our row marker tail. Okay, round ten. Round ten is just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. We're going to end round ten with thirty single crochets. Thirty, moving row marker tail. For round eleven, we are going to single crochet in the first four stitches and then single crochet increase in the fifth stitch. So it's the pattern is going to be one, 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 and then two. So four single crochets and then two in the fifth stitch. Okay, we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. You're going to end round eleven with 36 single crochets. So single crochet in the first four. One, two, three, four, and then two. One, two. One, two, three, four, one, Two. 35, 36. Great, guys. Okay, move your row marker tail, move your row marker. Awesome. Okay, so now it says change to your pink yarn or pipsqueak yarn, but we're going to just say change to your pink yarn. So, what I'm going to do for a clean separation is I'm going to slip stitch into the very next stitch, slip stitch. I am going to grab my scissors, cut a small tail, and I'm going to yarn over and pull that through to create a slip knot. And then we're going to tuck all of that on the inside of the face. Grab your pink or whatever color you are working with. If you're working with the pip squeak yarn, grab the pip squeak yarn. Again, I am going to use a row marker tail, so I'm going to start with a long tail before I form my slip knot. If you are working with a pip squeak yarn, go ahead and find where we tied our knot, go backwards a stitch, insert your crochet hook into that stitch, yarn over, and slip into your loop on your hook so you only have one loop on your hook. 
chain one and stop. Wait for us to catch up with you, okay? If you are working with the non-textured yarn, size three paint box yarn, what I'm going to do to create the effect of making it a little poofier off of the face is I am just gonna pull from the front loop only of that stitch, okay? So looking at the top of our stitches, we see our V shapes right here, our Vs. I'm going to pull from that front loop only, okay? Yarn over and slip stitch into the loop that's already on your hook so that you only have one loop on your hook. Great. Okay, so now we're both in the exact same spot. We're going to chain one and single crochet in that very same stitch, okay? If you have the pip squeak yarn, you're putting your, sing your crochet hook underneath both loops of your stitch. If you're using the size three paint box yarn, you're just going to insert your crochet hook in that first loop, front loop only. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. There's your first single crochet, guys. Great. Okay, so when we look at round 12, it says one single crochet in the first five stitches and then increase single crochet. Okay, so your first five stitches, starting with this one, this would be one. Your first five stitches, you'll have one single crochet and in your sixth stitch, you'll put two single crochets and then repeat that pattern all the way around. For round 12, you will end with 42 single crochets. Remember, if you're using the Pip Squeak highly textured yarn, you're going to do a single crochet a normal way underneath both loops. If you are using a thinner yarn in order to make that poofed out effect, we're just going to do a front loop only single crochet, okay? So we have one stitch there. two, jump over the knot, three, four, five, okay, and in the sixth stitch we're going to put two single crochets, one, and again, if you're doing the size three paint box yarn, you're still only in the front loop only. So one and two. And repeat all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, 41, 42, great, okay. Go ahead and find your row marker. I have a row marker tail that I established. So I'm gonna yarn that over and pull that through my loop to just close off round 12. If you are using your row markers, go ahead and put your row marker in that last single crochet right there. Okay, so it says round 13 through round 18 is single crochet in each stitch around. This is where you can choose to either continue going with the flow of the pattern or you can manipulate the size of your shape. Okay, at this point right now with round 13, if you wanted to, you could keep expanding to make your head bigger, to make the poof bigger if you wanted to, especially if you're only using the size three weighted yarn. And if you are using the Pip Squeak yarn with, that's highly textured, you're just gonna go ahead and keep following along with the pattern, just that round 13 through 18, single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just continue as if we were following the pattern normally. If you do want to deviate, this is just where you would do it, okay? So for round 13, we're going to single crochet both loops now for the paint box size three weighted yarn. We're done making the, the shape poof out from the normal interface. So we're going to use both loops, one, two, 
and single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You will end each round, round 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and round 18, they will each have 42 single crochets in their round, just to guide you if you wanted to count to make sure you were staying on track. Okay, once you have finished round 18, look at the instructions. It now says it is time to sew on the nose and attach the eyes to your head creation. And then after that, we will close off your head and the head will be done. Super excited, almost done. Grab your black color yarn, cut off a little bit of that. Okay, take your tapestry needle or yarn needle, thread that through. Okay, when it comes to the nose, let's do the nose first. The nose is a Y shape. So we're gonna have the middle of the nose be the very center of your circle. Just kind of make a V and then a line down. So it looks almost like a Y shape, okay? So I'm going to enter in row one, two. So in between row two and three, I'm gonna enter in a stitch. Okay, don't take all of it, just take some of it. Okay, leave some in the middle of your, your face. Go in that center beginning magic ring or the six single crochets, that very first center. Now we're gonna go, let's go into the fourth stitch away from the first one we just made. Right there. Okay, and then go back into that center circle. Okay, there's your nose, and for the mouth, we're just gonna go directly down. So looking at your center, one, two, so that spot right there, okay? And back into the center. And that is your nose and your mouth, right there. Super cute. I'm going to turn it inside out, so that way I can cut off the black yarn, and I'm gonna tie these two strings in a knot to secure. I made four knots, kind of went overkill on it, but I just wanted to actually make sure it stayed put. Okay, so there's my nose and my mouth. Now I'm going to attach my eyes. So taking my little buttons, first, the eyes are really, you're just going to look at your creation and decide where you want to put them, okay? There's no set place to put them because your eye, your uh, button shape for your eye might be different than my button shape. I want, might want to put it a little higher up towards the top of the head. I might want to put it a little closer to the nose. So this is really going to be just where you want your eyes to go. Just eyeball that. Cut the yarn. Tie it in a knot to secure. When you attach the second button, the only thing you need to make sure is there's symmetry. You just need to make sure there's the same amount of rows between sections. Perfect, okay, all those strings are now gonna be hidden inside the face. Perfect, great. So our face is done. Okay, grabbing our crochet hook, reinserting back into the loop. Okay, now we are ready to start our rows where we start closing this head shape up. I'm not gonna stuff just yet. I'm actually going to wait to stuff the head till we get to row 23, okay? Give ourselves some security <laughs> to make sure the stuffing doesn't just pop out or get out, get in the way. Okay, so for round 19, it says single crochet in the first five stitches and then single crochet decrease. I learned a trick a little while ago with another stuffed animal pattern that if you single crochet front loop only when you decrease, it helps cover up a lot of those gap holes, which is super convenient. If you are using the pipsqueak yarn, you don't have to worry about this because your yarn is so highly textured, we're not gonna be able to see the gap holes anyway. So don't worry about this step if you're using the pipsqueak yarn. But if you're using a non-textured yarn, this is a great trick for any of your stuffed animals. Okay, so front loop only, single crochet in the first five stitches, two, three, four, five, okay, and then we're going to decrease the next two stitches together. So front loop only, one, yarn over, pull through, 
So now you have two loops on your hook. Next stitch, front loop only. Yarn over, pull through. So now you have three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops and make this stitch and this stitch turn into one stitch. Now we single crochet in the next five stitches. Front loop only if you're using a non-textured yarn. One, two, three, four, five, and then decrease the next two together. Right, looking great at the very end of round 19, we're going to single crochet decrease the last two stitches together. Perfect, yarn over, pull through. Okay, so with round 20, we're gonna continue to decrease. So we're going to single crochet in the first four stitches and then decrease single crochet the fifth and sixth stitch together, okay? If you are using a non-textured yarn, you are continuing to use that front loop only, single crochet front loop only, because again, by doing that trick, it's gonna fill in all the holes as we're slowly decreasing, which will end up showing less stuffing. It'll look a lot better. So if you're using the pip squeak yarn, you don't have to worry about this. Just continue to insert your crochet hook underneath both loops. Do a regular single crochet, four stitches, and then single crochet decrease in the fifth and sixth stitch, okay? So let's go. In round 20, you're going to end with 30 single crochets. One, front loop only. Two, three, four, and then single crochet decrease. One, two, three, four, front loop only, single crochet, decrease. Okay, the last two stitches of round 20, we're going to single crochet decrease. Perfect. Okay, moving our row marker tail. We are now in round 21. Round 21, it says single crochet in the first three stitches and then single crochet decrease. So one, two, three, and then stitch four and five, we're going to decrease together. Again, front loop only if you're using a non-textured yarn. One, two, three, and then decrease four and five together. One, two, three, four, and five together. Okay, you're gonna end round 21 with 24 single crochets. Last two stitches of row 21, we are going to decrease together. Great, move our row marker tail or row marker. Okay, we are now in round 20. Two. Round 22, it says single crochet in the first two stitches, one, two, and then decrease the next two. So stitch three and stitch four, we're going to decrease together. Again, non-texture yarn, front loop only single crochet. One, two, and then three and four we'll get stitched together. You will end round 22 with 18 single crochets. One, two, three and four together. <laughs> Last two stitches of round 22. We're going to single crochet those together. Okay, move our row marker tail or move your row marker. And now is the point right before we dive into round 23. Now we're going to stuff. Okay, so pull out your polyfill or your stuffed animal stuffing. I'm gonna remove my crochet hook because it's just gonna catch on all of the stuffing. And you're going to start filling the head part of the llama. Okay, you wanna make sure you can 
put a lot of your polyfill into the creation to really help it take form, but you don't want to overdo it to where the stitches are stretching and showing polyfill or showing your stuffing material. Oh, he's so cute. Look at him. And really make sure that the nose section gets a lot fill, that it can hold form. Okay, I'm going to stop right there because I still have an opening and I want to make sure none of the stuffing gets in the way of me doing my last two rows. So for round 23, it says single crochet in the first stitch and then decrease stitch two and three together. Okay, if you're using the non-textured yarn, we are still continuing to front loop only single crochet. Okay, so one and then stitch two and stitch three are going to stitch together. One, two, three. Finished round 23, moving my row marker tail. Go ahead and move your row marker if that's what you used. Okay, last round is round 24. So before we close this up, make sure that you don't want to add any more stuffing. You might wanna add a little bit more in this space right here. When you are good, round 24 is just decrease single crochet every two stitches together. Again, still, if you're using a non-textured yarn, we're just using the front loop only. Okay, so stitch one, stitch two, yarn over, pull through. Stitch one, stitch two, yarn over, pull through. Okay, all the way around. You should end round 24 with six single crochets. Great, once you've reached the end of round 24, I'm gonna yarn tail over, pull through. I'm going to take my crochet hook and insert it into the stitch diagonal from the one that I just ended with. Yarn over, pull through that loop, pull through my top loop, and that just closes up that loop all the way. Oh, that circle all the way to make sure there's no gap space, make sure there's no hole in the back. Okay, I'm gonna grab my scissors and you can cut a short tail, okay? We're not gonna use this tail to sew onto any pieces of the work. So taking the working yarn that I just cut, yarn over, pull through my loop and pull tight and that makes the slip knot the knot that secures my work. Okay, I have a row marker tail still because I used the row marker tail to follow me along through my rows. So I'm going to take both of my strings and tie knots, extra securing everything. I'm going to take my crochet hook, insert into one of the spaces, pop out right in the middle, take my two strings, grab my yarn with the crochet hook and pull it into the work. And now that's sucked into the work. The stuffing will hold it in place. The front loop only really helps to make sure that there's maximum coverage so you're not seeing the stuffing in the back with your stitches. Okay, our head is done.